We can go okay. ahead and get started. Randall, I'm going to go ahead and um, stream us live on Facebook. So everybody ready? Ready or not, here we come. Okay, sounds good. Let's hope this works. All right, we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. Um, and uh, we will look at the minutes from the November 24th meeting. Has everyone had opportunity to review those minutes? We just need a motion. And yes, did we get a motion to accept these minutes? I'll make that motion. Thank you very much, Ryan. Do we have a second? I second. All right. Thank you. I didn't see who the second was, but all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you. All right, Randall. All right. Public comment period. Do we have anybody yes. from the public that would like to comment? If not, they can put it in the Facebook Live the chat. chat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we have anyone monitoring the Facebook Live for the, if anybody does comment? Elizabeth. Okay. I am. All right. Elizabeth, are you seeing anything yet? I am not seeing anything yet. And I am having a problem with Facebook Live, just so you all know. It's okay. All right. Well, let's move on to the county transportation updates. Who wants to go first? All right, I will. Trimble County. Uh, last week, uh, the state, uh, or a couple weeks ago, the uh, State Highway Department uh, sent us a letter saying we needed to reduce the weight limits on one of our bridges uh, down to three tons. So, uh, I reached out to a, a bridge contractor and uh, going to start to work on applying for the 80-20 money. Uh, it is a bridge over Dockerty Creek on Loudon Lane, and it's going to be a big project, but uh, we're hopeful to get this thing done by maybe August or September. And right now, all of our guys are out uh, pushing snow and trying to clean the roads. That's Trimble County. Shelby County. Ryan or Craig? I mute yourself, Mayor. I'll go. Um, go ahead, Craig. Shelby County, same way. Um, everybody here, city, county, state, Simpsonville, all of us been out all night pushing snow. Um, roads are looking good. Uh, other than that, we're still cutting trees and Making repairs to trucks after each little snow event. All right. What about Spencer County? Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Spencer County is pretty much the same. We're, um, you know, making sure the roads are clear. And um, uh, Craig, you mentioned repairing equipment and so forth. We had a one of our uh, trucks, uh, the, the, um, 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 box on the uh, motor on the box on the back uh, went bad, so that kind of put it out of commission. Um, but other than that, we're uh, uh, moving moving along pretty well with the uh, replacement of the bridge on uh, Washburn Lane. Uh, and uh, you mentioned uh, uh, Todd the the uh, weight limit on bridges. Um, you know, I've got a, a couple of bridges. I might talk to Randall and some of them about this, but on Highway 44, uh, we've got a couple of bridges out there that are weight limited to 22 ton. And the, the answer that I'm getting is that the reason for that is that they don't have the plans of when those bridges were built. And it seems to me like uh, somebody's got to have those plans, either Corps of Engineers when the lake was put in and that road was put in or something, but you know that they're weight limiting those bridges to 22 ton. Uh, the 
because they don't have the plans to the bridge. So anyway, maybe, maybe you all can give me some help on that at some point. But other than that, um, hey, we're uh, we're rocking and rolling out here in Spencer County. Good deal. Thank you, Judge. Mayor, did you have anything from Shelbyville? Oh, we're doing fine here. Craig might uh, say everything needs to be said. All right. Henry County? That's, I can see it, Judge. All right. Well, let's move right along to uh, the uh, Kentuckians for Better Transportations update. Hey, just wanted to tell you that the Kentuckians for Better Transportation um, at last week, the conference had 650 uh, transportation industry leaders and heard from uh, state legislators, Jimmy Higdon, David Osborne, and Sal Santero, and talked about UPS and DHL. I attended some good sessions there. Um, one was transportation role and safety delivery of the COVID vaccine and uh, railroads and the bridge in Kentucky design build. That's all I had on that, Joe. Randall, was there any discussion about the gas tax by the legislators of the Kentuckians for Better Transportation? Yes, Jared, there was. Um, Rep Representative South Centauro talked about the 10 cent uh, gas tax, and he'll be a final bill, bill for that. All right. I don't know. I don't. I don't know when they meet again. The legislators are. Thank you very much, Randall. Yes. All right. Now, how about an update from the uh, KYTC state engineer? I'll turn that over to Jared. It's my pleasure to welcome uh, James Ballinger. As KYTC's state highway engineer, James leads the Department of Highways and oversees the planning, design, and construction of transportation infrastructure for the entire Commonwealth. He joined KYTC in 1987 following graduation from the University of Kentucky where he received a bachelor's of science in civil engineering. James served in various roles throughout his career, including a resident engineer in Madison County, managing highway district construction and district pre-construction branches, supervising major projects such as the widening of Clay's Ferry Bridge and the construction of the Richmond Bypass, and serving as chief district engineer for five and a half years in Highway 27. After retiring from KYTC in December 2014, James joined the Kentucky Transportation Center at the University of Kentucky as a research and train, training engineer. In 2015, he joined Vaughn and Melton Consulting Engineers and directed their Lexington office until he was appointed KYT State Highway Engineer last summer. Uh, James, welcome. We appreciate you joining us today. Hey, th thank you, Jared, for that uh, nice introduction, though. Appreciate that. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Okay. Okay, I, I heard somebody the other day I was on a presentation and they said they're coming uh, to you guys from their Zoom room. And I thought that was kind of interesting though. So my Zoom room today is from uh, from our farm here in Rockcastle County. I, I, uh, I live uh, way out in the country, I guess. It's kind of near Berea. I think most, most of you guys may know where that's at. So uh, I live in the mountains uh, down, down toward, uh, uh, toward almost the eastern part of the state. So uh, Mount Vernon's our county seat in the county I'm from here, but we live closer to Berea. So uh, got a cattle farm here, and uh, we raise some Hereford cattle. And uh, you know, uh, just my, my daughter likes to show cattle, so I, I just uh, kind of consider myself uh, just a country guy. And I'm thankful for the opportunity to get to serve as a state highway engineer, something I'm passionate about, which is transportation. Uh, I grew up in an area where transportation was critically important. You know, it, it was. I, I grew up on a, a road that was a gravel road. We had a hard time getting to school. Uh, a lot of times getting grade school because uh, the, the, the school bus couldn't navigate, you know, the, whenever the, the, the road would get too muddy and things. So uh, we try to take her to back a crop to town, you know, it was important that we had a good road to do that. So uh, I think those are, those are important, you know, uh, uh, factors to, to the rural communities in Kentucky, but also uh, I understand the critical importance of the, um, of, of good urban roadways too. You know, I, I worked in the Lexington district office and, uh, 
uh, you know, th those investments that we make in transportation, whether it's New Circle Road or uh, the interstate that we have or the bypasses around the towns or, uh, you know, like they're working on in District uh, 6 up in Northern Kentucky right now. I know there's a huge amount of economic activity going on associated with Amazon and DHL and, and, and I know there's uh, some investment going on there. So th those are important too. Uh, so, so, so I think they're all important. I, I think that's one thing that I try to bring the perspective of is, you know, um, there, there's not just roads for the urban areas, or there's not just roads for the urban areas. They're all they're all important you know, to me. So that that's kind of a perspective that I try to try to bring to it. And uh, I think that I'm, you know, I'm at least being from a rural area, though, I think I can can have that perspective on it. So, and uh, so I, I do uh, do appreciate you all inviting me, Jared. I appreciate the invitation, and and for Amanda and uh, Randall, uh, you know, thank you all for the invitation to come speak for the, for the officials, elected officials, though. I really admire what you guys do. It's a tough job. Uh, I, I just, you know, it's a tough job today. And I always tell anybody that's in an elected role out there, guys, I, I appreciate you stepping out there and, and, and putting yourself out there right now to, to get to do that. My, my wife's involved in the, the school system. She's actually the superintendent of schools here in Rockcastle County. And, it's tough when you're in a role like that. And I, I, I tell her tell her all the time that, you know, we I do appreciate her and appreciate you guys. Um, I was just gonna take a minute here and update, you know, things at the cabinet and what we're doing and uh, just a few things and, you know, look 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 at 2020 and the review a little bit, 2021, and then uh, touch on a few things. And I'll open it up to any questions you guys have. Uh, I'm not an expert on all the projects uh, that are in the, in uh, you know Spencer, Shelby, Henry, or Trimble counties, uh, I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with those areas, you know, but I, I don't I don't know every project down to the detail, uh, but I certainly can uh, can take any questions or if it's something we'll try to get you guys an answer on them. Though I think that's really important. Um, at the cabinet, though, y'all were talking when we got on about snow and ice and trying to uh, be out last night trying to trying to fight the snow. Uh, of course, we're struggling through that too right now. We we have. Uh, cruise out all over the state. I get a report every hour on the hour during the night though. My wife gets aggravated at me for looking at the phone all the time, seeing what's going on. But we have, you know, we have pretty good system though of communication. We use Teams channels and we kind of know what's going on from District 1 in Paducah all the way to Pikeville in District 12. So we try to keep up with the events as they unfold across the state. And we're trying to use more technology. You know, we're probably like you guys. We don't have as many people as we'd like to have anymore. It's harder to attract, to hire, retain people that can uh, have a CDL and drive the trucks. You know, it's a, it's a real challenge in some of our areas. Not as much in the rural areas, but in the urban areas especially. So we're, we're trying to work together. We're trying to be just as efficient as we possibly can be, you know, by using the AVL units on the, the, the snow trucks and uh, trying to use the, the communication tools that we have to be as efficient as we can. And then we're dealing with COVID on top of it. So, you know, last night we had a Woodford County was shut down, didn't have, you know, due to the uh, positive uh, case there. And so uh, we've had some some plans in place in case that were to happen. So we have uh, strike force trucks. We got some backup trucks we can send out of Frankfurt to anywhere in the state, kind of a, a pool of trucks and some drivers. But also we, we uh, cover that from other counties. You know, we've had to bring in folks from, you know, uh, Scott, uh, Fayette County, other places to cover uh, to cover Woodford during the event. So we, it's challenging right now, guys. I, I know that you all are facing the same things that we are. Uh, uh, we rely on contractors. So it's it's something that, that it's just a different price scale, but we, we have to face some of the same things that you guys are. Teleworking, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here at, at the house working. Most of the folks in central office and the districts are still working uh, from home. Out under maintenance uh, facilities, though, you know, of course, they're all they're all still still working, showing up every day. And the one thing that we found, though, is that we've actually uh, turned out to be pretty pretty um, more efficient than we would have expected by using the technology. And I, I tell people that I don't know what we would have done if we had had the pandemic uh, before we had the ability to have a meeting like this, or before we had the technologies to to, to have a Zoom meeting or a Teams meeting. It would have been it would have been tough, and um, but we we've we've been able to uh, to use the technology and, and everybody working together. And I tell people all the time, everybody says, "Well, how are you getting anything done?" And, and my philosophy is that that our good employees when we were in person are good employees at home, and our employees that maybe weren't such good employees at, at work, well, they're not the best employees at home either. And and I tell people, I kid them, I said, "Well, and at least they're not bothering the good employees." But, but so, so ultimately, I think it balanced out. We've been able to deliver a pretty good program, you know, this last year. I know it wasn't uh, 
wasn't as much as what we would like to have done. And kind of with that and along that thread though, looking at um, 2020 and as we look back, uh, trying to operate the highway department in uh, uh, 2020 during the pandemic. Um, I started August, August 1st, uh, but I, I, you know, kind of new to it a little bit, but I was kind of involved because I was in the industry too. But I like to look back on 2020 into four quarters, kind of like a football game is four quarters though. And the first first quarter of the year was, you know, we had a new administration, you had a new governor, you had uh, Secretary Jim Gray came on board and there was a lot of optimism. What are we going to get done? How, how are we going to do things? And then boy, the second quarter we got into and then, and then COVID hit. And it was, I call that almost like the old crap quarter, you know, what are we going to do, you know? And, uh, you know, we probably like a lot of you guys and I've, you know, I've got friends that are county judges here in Rock Ass and Jackson County and, and, and a lot of us kind of slowed down. We had to lock up a little bit saying, so, you know, we don't know what it's going to do to our revenue, to our, to, to everything, uh, to, uh, our, our gas tax revenue, usage tax. I know that the, the, the things that you guys uh, rely on to be able to deliver things. So the second quarter, you know, that we got into in 2020 was, was, was pretty tough. Hit the brakes. Well, then uh, everybody, I think, was hopeful that the pandemic would be behind us by summer. You all remember those conversations. Yeah, this thing will blow over. It'll, it'll, it'll you know, we'll get summertime, hot weather, and, you know, we, we won't think any more about it. It'll, it'll be behind us. And, you know, that's not nice at all. We all know that. So by the third quarter of the year, though, we kind of said, well, we got to do something. We got to regroup and plan here. We got we to get some things done. So I call that the regroup and planning quarter, third quarter. Uh, we didn't even have a halftime, I don't think. We just rolling right on through. And then uh, the fourth quarter, though, was kind of get back to business. So, you know, let's 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 figure out. You know, with the pandemic, with the let's use the technology. Let's use the things we've got. Let, let's let's get back to doing things again, guys. We can't we can't wait forever on this pandemic to be over. So I I kind of like to look look back on 2020 like that. You know, we we ended up in in last year with about 632 million dollars in contract lettings for the year, uh, which is which is a pretty good year you know it, it was down we use it we've been running 750 800 million dollars uh but but we kind of hit the we kind of had to hit the gas there there was a lot of needs that, that, that showed up as we pull back the activities you know you are talking early on about cutting trees uh, we got a lot of needs just to cut dead trees we got a lot of needs you know to, to do the maintenance activities we just got off a call this morning when and i know somebody mentioned the culverts the, the memo that came out about the culvert and the, the, the structure closure so we're, we're trying to deal with some of those right now we're trying to deal with you know uh, uh, patching and puddles and and all the things that we have to do to keep the roads uh you know open and maintained so we we're working on that i would like to mention um i work department of highways at state Highway. bobby joe lewis is a, a commissioner in rural and misplayed she does an outstanding job. I know you guys work with her and her staff. Craig Cottle, he's a great guy. I've worked with Craig and known him for many, many years. He's just an outstanding public servant and, uh, you know, understands what you guys need. Uh, working through local programs, there's a lot of need. So, so Bobby Joe really rolled up her sleeves and, and got to work. And I think you all were, uh, saw the benefits, a lot of those uh, work in the fourth quarter toward the latter part of the year, though, that, 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 things, that things started moving again. Uh, and one of the challenges we, we faced last year in 2020, it's kind of interesting though, our, our uh, driving was down, the number of uh, gallons of gas that people, you know, were, that they bought and the gas tax revenue was down last year, you know, I think uh, uh, pretty, pretty significantly though. So, the, so the, the motor fuel revenue coming into the highway department was, was a challenge, it was down, but the interesting flip side of that is the usage tax was up though. People were still buying new and used cars uh, at, a, at a really incredible pace last year. And uh, I guess it was, you know, due to the stimulus. I, I'm not sure what was going on. Maybe people didn't have, a, you know, they weren't spending their money that they had on vacations and traveling. So there, were, there was a, the, the, so the usage tax at the end of the year, we found that kind of compensated for that. So that allowed us to have more confidence that we could start, you know, doing some of those uh, critical activities that we needed to do. So I thought that was an interesting, uh, you know, observation from 2020 looking back. As we project and look forward into 2021, we're kind of cautiously optimistic though. Uh, we are gonna be getting some what's called COVID relief funding from the federal government. There's about $165 million come into the state. And um, that's a, a one-time, uh, just a, 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 it's a, it's a amount of funding that that's, it's gonna help in the kind of the short term. We're gonna be able to do some of the federal projects that we have not been able to do in the past uh, or that on the state funded side, you know, we, we have to really have a, a lot of uh, funds to be able to match the federal dollars that we have. So, so we've got to make sure if you get 
uh, 80% federal, you still got to have that 20% state match, and we no longer really have the toll. I mean, the toll credits to, to be able to match with. So that's that's been a change. So that 165 million dollars coming to Kentucky is going to be a real shot in the arm. Now it's not going to be a long-term sustainable. It's not like it's going to be a replacement. You know, somebody's talking earlier for a fuel tax increase or something. Uh, you know, sustainably, if we as we project out forward, the needs that we have at the state, though, with the you know, with the, the, the lane miles that we have and the 14,000 structures and everything else though, we don't really have enough revenue to, to sustainably maintain the system at the level that we would like to going forward. And that's why that as we talked about the fuel, you know, the, the, the gas tax, you know, out there, it's gonna be important to us uh, to get it increased. Most states around us has increased their gas tax revenue. And I know I don't like tax either. I don't, I mean, I don't, don't want it, don't like it, but, it's going to be critical because because you know we're on a path though we we're not going to be able to keep up or deliver those um, not only the asset management projects which is our structures and pavements and signals and signs and those kind of things but it's also those mobility projects those projects that 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 provide for that economic development that's so critical to to the rural parts of the state so that that that's important to for that as well as far as uh, I always like to talk about this kind of in closing here is the planning efforts. And it's what you guys are doing today. It's working as the Real Transportation Council working, uh, you know, through KEPDA. Um, as a former district engineer and someone that's worked at the Bluegrass, uh, worked with the Bluegrass ads, someone that, you know, I mean, I live down in Cumberland Valley ads, my area. Um, the, the input that you guys give into the priorities that you have, though, is is, is critical, though. It's, it's, it's so valuable, though, for the, for the long term that, that, that to, to, to help us to provide the information that we need uh, is just is just so critical and invaluable that. I know it does require some patience though. I know, I know that we all kid around about well, we've had our projects on the plan for 20 years and this and that, but but it's 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 important. I know we're getting ready to kick off that process. I don't know if you guys have had your meetings or not yet with the state, but 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 those are those are really, really important to us. And I tell people all the time I've worked through project development in different areas though that that most every project that we ever have that we deliver through the highway plan started locally. They started working with a county judge or the, the local elected official somewhere though. Those, those are the kind of things though that, that, that come up through the process, but it does require a lot of patience uh, many times. And you know, those funds are limited though, but, but, but please, please you know, participate, in, give your input and uh, into that process. It's critically important to us. There's also uh, uh, currently something's kind of interesting right now, the statewide quarter planning program. I think within, uh, I checked with my guys and um, <clears throat> within your all's, um, your four counties in the uh, trans uh, transportation council area though, uh, there's, there's, there's four corridors that are going to be looked at for some potential further visioning though. That would be um, Kentucky 44 Spencer, 421 uh, Trimble Henry and uh, Shelby County and 60 in Shelby County though. And so the, I think they're going to be seeking more localized input and some more information from the, from the local officials into those corridors. And that's going to be kind of an important thing we're going to be looking at because corridors are important economically. They're important, uh, uh, you know, for, for the quality of life in our communities, for folks to get to work, to school, whatever it is. So we're, we're, going, to, we're going to be looking at that. And then uh, uh, kind of lastly, I would um, encourage everybody to, if you don't have a bike ped plan, to, to think about that a little bit, to think about developing a bike ped plan. I know when I worked in uh, uh, District 7, a lot of times, you know, there would be a request for a sidewalk or a trail or connectivity, things like that. And it's, it's a whole lot easier to, to within our transportation project though, if, if we're gonna make an investment into those kind of things, if it's a part of the local community's priorities and then a part of their plan, it's a lot easier for us to make that decision to include those investments into our project though, and to commit those dollars if, it's, if it matches up with what you guys locally have as a part of your plans for your, uh, for your uh, bike and ped facilities. So I'd, I'd encourage everyone to, to do that. I don't know for sure if you've got them or everybody may have one, I don't know. No, but if I just want to make make sure, I always like to say that uh, whenever I, I talk to uh, to groups like this. And then uh, the other thing is, uh, our Matt Bullock is our district engineer in District Five, and his staff though they do a good job. If you guys have questions, concerns, anything like that, you know, reach out to Matt. Work, work through him and his staff to try to you know try to get resolution to them. Uh, doesn't matter how big or small it is, if it's a drainage uh, complaint or an issue that a constituent has on a rural roadway out here somewhere, you know, work work with them those guys and and I think they'll you'll find that they'll they'll do their best to try to solve those those issues for you though so that's really ever, everything that I had you know again I just thank you for your time 
and uh, I enjoy these things though. This is this is what I really enjoy doing is working with uh, local officials. You know, this is this is what it's all about, guys, is serving the public. And this is my, you know, it's an opportunity to get to do that. For, you know, I'll, I'll open it up to any questions. I hope it didn't take too much time, Jared and uh, Randall, but uh, but I'll be happy to try to answer any questions you two may have. It's a quiet group today. <laughs> Well, we really appreciate you taking the time to join us, James. Right. Well, thank, thank you. Any I've got one quick tonight? question, if, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Do you see any changes with funding? You brought up the bike ped plan, and when Kip to help uh, Shelby County and the cities of Shelbyville and Simpsonville in 2017 develop one. And uh, we've got a lot of great projects in there that are uh, just sitting there because of funding. Is there going to be any more grant money? Do you see coming down the future from the legislation that we'll be able to tap into to, to complete some projects? Well, I, I, don't, I don't know if I could specifically say there will be, but I do know there's been conversation related to, to those type of quality of life, um, um, other modes of transportation projects. I know our, our Secretary of Transportation is supportive of those kind of projects, though. So I think that's um, that's why I think it's important to have those plans in place. So when those opportunities are, are made available and uh, based upon some things I'm seeing from the, from the federal potential, if there is a, maybe a stimulus, I don't want to get everybody's hopes up, but there's talk of a, a stimulus coming from the, from the federal government. And the last time we had the Aura projects, I don't know if y'all remember those, that was kind of the economic recovery project. So there was the ability to do a lot of trail projects and quality of life, things like that. And those, I, I'm not saying there will be with that, I'm just saying to be prepared for those type opportunities when they present themselves. Thank you. We, we've, we've tried to go ahead and plan ahead and be ready. So when those funds are available, we have the document to, to point to and show support and get those projects in the ground. We've got a lot of schools that need connections with sidewalks and pathways and yeah. get the kids off the state roads from walking on the shoulders or in the ditches. And so we're trying to be, be prepared. We're actually looking at some opportunities for uh, kind of we call them school related state funded projects right now. I think we've uh, there's some in Trimble County. I think there's a at the, I think it's the high school. We're looking at some turn lanes, do a project up there, and uh, we're 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 move, advancing that project though. So I don't know if you knew that or not, uh, but yeah. I, that that that's one that's moving forward. I've got a question. Yes, sir. Um, looking out into the future. Uh, with the way the government is pushing toward uh, alternate fuel, getting away from gas and oil. Is there anyone looking in, how are we going to recoup the gas tax if they do get away from fossil fuel? Or, I mean, would it be like electric charging station okay. fees? Or, I found this on the web. For, is there anyone yeah. looking in, how are we going to recoup the <laughs> Anyway. They start talking back to you, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We're 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 looking at uh, different studies uh, regarding that. There are several states that are doing pilot programs, though. I know Oregon had had, had one a few years ago, and, and other places because we've not really seen it in in Kentucky. As there's there's a lot of electric bills in Kentucky, but it's not it's it's not had a huge impact yet. But, but based upon what Senator Jimmy Higdon and some others, he did a presentation at KBT talk, and uh, talking about some of these things. There's getting ready to be a lot of electric vehicles though, uh, across the country though. It's, we're just at the tip of the iceberg. And so we're looking at all those alternatives. I know the legislature is looking at them. I know we are transportation are looking at those uh, uh, as we transition away from uh, being able to obtain the funding we need to maintain the system from uh, uh, fossil based fuels, the, the gas tax revenue, uh, uh, the motor fuels that we call it. Uh, so, so, and it's not just that, but it's also, you know, the, the, the cafe standards, the, the, the efficiency, the, the mileage is increased on so many vehicles today. You know, I used to buy a farm truck here and I'd get 12 or 15 miles a gallon. And I mean, I, I buy a farm truck now and I can get, you know, 18, 20, 22 miles per gallon on it, on a, on a, on a farm truck. And, and I'm paying less in gas tax on that and, you know, and using the road the same. And so we're, we're looking absolutely at those things to, to try to come up with a, a more of a sustainable alternative revenue streams going forward. I don't have an answer for you yet, uh, uh, Craig, but we're, we're looking into those things. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Bollinger. Uh, 
And now we have the uh, 2020 shift schedule. Yes, uh, the, this goes what, along with James talked about. Um, I sent the list out. We already had our local meetings to talk about uh, the chaff projects and uh, the schedule. We'll be starting January to um, April and we'll be looking at new projects to add to, to chaff. And then um, we'll be getting <clears throat> the statewide and regional priorities scored from KYTC in May. And then we'll be boosting those projects in the summer, RTC will be. Jacob, did I lose him? No, Jacob Huber from the say, Regional Planning Zone. <clears throat> did I, on the shift schedule, did that look good? I sent, sent out the list of- Yeah, yeah, I think, I think you sent out the updated one. I haven't seen if um, uh, Jason Blackburn's kind of leading that this year with KYTC up in the planning end. And if he has any updates, we should know in a, you know maybe a week or so. I think he was he was thinking the first of February we'd have some good updates uh, if anything changed. Thanks, Jacob. Yeah, no problem. That's all I had on that, Judge. All right, all right. Thank you so much. And uh, now we'll just move right on down the line. Uh, I lost my agenda, guys. I'm sorry about that. It's the active transportation. There you transportation go. plan. Yes, thank you very much, Randall. Just wanted to tell you that active the transportation plan is being um, performed by the MPO, and they're looking at bot, uh, walking and riding, and forming a complete streets work group. There, we already got five hundred public surveys. And I will send that out to our TC members. Y'all can um, give input on that. And that's all I had on it. All right. Thank you, uh, Randall. And do we have any other business to discuss today? No, Judge. All right. And uh, next uh, uh, Regional Transportation Council meeting is March 25th. 2021. I'm sure agendas will be sent out and Zoom meeting invites. And, yes. Uh, so the last order of business is, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Mayor. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Judge. All those in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, guys. Meeting is adjourned. And thank you so much, guys. And uh, see you at the next one. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Everybody. Thanks. Thank you.